I'd like you to do something for me this morning as an act of worship, and it'll be a little risky for some of you, uh, but uh, that all ties into my message. So um, I'm going to explain to you what we're going to do, and then uh, I'm going to ask you to do it. This last week, I was meeting with a small group of men in my office, and one of the men who's new among us, he's been here for a while now, for four or five weeks or something like that, he said that recently he met some, another man in this, I don't know if that person's here or not, but he said, I met somebody in the uh, meeting on Sunday mornings, and they've been going... They've been worshiping here for 15 years, but uh, they didn't, haven't met anybody. I said, man, we got we to gotta conquer that. We got to get over that. And uh, so uh, it reminded me of several years ago, there was a lady I met out there in the lobby, and I, I never say, and I encourage you not to say it, don't say, is this your first Sunday? And I, you'll get yourself in trouble every time. So I say, how long have you been worshiping with us? And this lady said, 20 years. <laughs> and I, I looked at her. I said, I don't think, I mean, inside I'm going, I don't think I've ever met this lady before. And I've been here almost 20 years at that time. So at any rate, would you be willing to take a risk this morning? Well, what is it? <laughs> well, I just want to help you get your uh, chemistry going a little bit. And... Uh, as I talked about last week, we have a, a, a hormone in our bodies that is released, particularly when certain things, we do certain things, and it helps us connect with other people, it helps us to feel better about ourselves. And so what I want you to do, not yet, is I want you to stand in just a minute, and I want you to find five people that look pretty strange, <laughs> and give them a hug. And uh, you can do the side hug, watch out for those that want to... <laughs> You know, do, do the side hug if that's what you want to do. Now, if you say, I, don't, I can't do hugs, then what I want you to do is like uh, my, my, uh, my adopted son, Kyung Jin, from Korea, they do a great, they, when they shake hands, he'll take two hands and kind of do this and uh, look people in the eyes. So if you want to do the two-handed shake, but what I want to do is, uh, and I, there's a spiritual reason to my madness here, uh, but you got to take a risk. I mean, you know, if you're going to move on, you've got to take a risk. So uh, I thought, what a great exercise, a spiritual exercise to do. Now, before we do this, I just want to point out, there are people in this room that you may be the only hug they've had all week. Or you may be the only hug they've had for a month. And so don't underestimate the power of your hug. So um, would you... Um, would you stand with me? And uh, I want to invite you to um, find five strange people, at least five, and give them a hug or a handshake. Go. Hi, Mary. Yeah. You've been around you. here for a while. Uh, about a month and a half. Uh, months, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if you can kind of hold it back now, it's gone over the, over the edge here. Okay. Hi. 
Hi, Larry. Alan? Three o'clock? Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, Ryan, for playing the guitar. Wow. Well, take out your outline. Some of you really had some pent-up things going there. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many got at least a couple hugs? All right, that's good. Man, you got that oxytocin just flowing. That hormone's going, and we're bonded together. Last week, I talked about the uh, hand we are dealt using a poker game as a metaphor for our lives. So if you didn't hear last week, go online or whatever and go back and review that. The week before that was our identity, who we are in Christ. And so today we're going to finish this out. And I want to ask you, are you willing to change? How many here say, I'm willing to change? How many say, I can't change? I'm glad that you are here today. We gather together on Sunday mornings, in fact, to bear witness that we can change. So I want to talk about being who God meant you to be. And it's going to be a wrap-up to uh, winning with the hand you were dealt. I was listening to the songs that uh, we were singing together and very appropriate words and uh, winning, uh, run the race to win. So I'd like you to turn to the person next to you and just say, I am wonderfully complex. Just tell them that. <laughs> so, let me do a quick review of last week. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 139, thank you for making me, dear God, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. And then this little saying, because we're going to talk about our life, and uh, we have been dealt cards in our life. Some we didn't have any. The word cards, that's a picture. It's a metaphor. It's not, we're just using it as a picture. So I must, um, life is like a hand of poker. You have to play the cards you're dealt. You can't play somebody else's cards. You can only play your cards. Many factors make up our life. So let me review, here's the five cards that were dealt in our life, and it is what shapes us, and how many here are willing, how many here are willing to change today? How many are willing to make some commitments to change? The first card in my life is my chemistry, my chemistry, my DNA, my makeup, I've got I've got Clifford and Madeline Smith DNA. I've got, uh, I've got, I did the uh, Ancestry.com. If you want to have fun, it's two weeks. You can do it for free and then cancel it. But uh, Ancestry.com, and you can, I went back and found out some of my, peop my relatives and grandparents and great-grandparents, and I found out that where they were buried and all that kind of stuff. So maybe someday I'll get to Southern Iowa and visit those places. Anyway, um, but we're a composite physically of what we've been given. I didn't get to choose to have such a great smile and such a great head of hair, uh, unlike some of my friends who have none, but uh, <laughs> I got hair, it's good stuff. And um, so my chemistry is unique. Your chemistry is unique. You didn't get to choose, you just got it dealt to you. It's the way it is. Even the way your body functions. Some of you, your body doesn't do well. Some of you have... Uh, disorders in your thinking, in your brain. How many know you can do that? How many know uh, your kidneys can... All sorts of stuff. Amen over here. At any rate, I forgot to tell you one little story last week because with the hugs, um, we are chemistry. When we have personal closeness with people, when we give them hugs, when we shake their hand, when we bust a move, thank you, Sandy Slay, she came up to me and said she offered to give me dance lessons because I don't dance. You know, I don't dance. And she said, she thought that was humorous that I said bust a move because she can picture me, I don't dance. At any rate, 
In the Midwest, there's a little animal called prairie voles. They're like little hamster-type critters, and uh, they are monogamous. They keep their partners for life. The male and the female are together for life. And if the male or the female dies, the other prairie vole does not go with anybody else. They live out the rest of their life alone. And they've been tested, and it's because they have this high oxytocin level in their little bodies. And so in the experiments they, they did on these prairie voles, they lowered their oxytocin levels and discovered they became as frisky as rabbits. Very practical. Our makeup, how we're made up, affects how we live our lives. How we live our lives. So my chemistry, that's the first card. The second card is my connections, that's relationships. How many here have relationships with some people? Two of us. My connections, that's the second card, relationships. Some of those I had no control over. Some of those I have great control over. The third card I'm dealt is my circumstances. I have uh, circumstances, in fact, uh, I have circumstances that have happened to me. I've had circumstances that I've caused, but my circumstances. The fourth card is my consciousness. It's what I'm saying to myself. It's what I think. It's what I feel about myself. It's how I look at myself. My consciousness. Now, that's a big word to spell out, but maybe it's up here. Oh, well, that's great. It's the eight of diamonds. When I was a kid growing up, you would never have done this. At any rate, it's all good. It's all good. And by the way, Sandy Slay, when I was growing up, we couldn't dance either, so that's why I didn't wear it. So, that's the reason my oxytocin levels are low. I didn't bust a move enough. So my consciousness and the fifth card is, are my choices. My choices. My choices. Now, the fifth card is the wild card in this metaphor, this picture. And when I do... When I play that card, it affects all the other cards. It affects the interaction of those cards. But I must, I must take responsibility for card number five. It's my choices. In fact, you say, I'm not going to make choices. By default, you are making choices. You're making choices. Now, let me just review quickly about these cards, what the Bible says about these factors in our life. I love this series because I just look around and I go, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I mean, I got people pictured in my head when I'm talking this uh, series. I'm thinking about people in this room. I won't call any names too much. Here's the uh, idea. Here's the five or four facts from the Bible about these five cards. And I'll review this a review of last week. Every card in my life has been damaged, has been marred by sin. Somebody else's wrongdoing or my wrongdoing. Every card in my life has been damaged. Number two, or the second thing, is every card in my life can be redeemed and transformed by Jesus Christ. Every card, every dynamic, every factor in my life can be redeemed and can be transformed by Jesus Christ. Some of you are incredible witnesses. You are bearing witness to the fact that Jesus can transform the worst of situations. Some of you feel as though you're stuck and you don't know that there's any hope to get out of your mess. The third factor about dealing with uh, the cards we're dealt is that one day you and I will give an account to God for how we played our hand. And God won't ask us, how did you play somebody else's hand? He's not going to say, how come you weren't more like somebody else? He's going to say, here's the hand you were dealt, and your hand is a winner. Amen. And how did you use it? Forgive me for my pause. Many of you in the room knew Corrine Kirkendall. Many of you didn't. She was a wife and a mom and a most importantly, a dear follower of Jesus. And uh, we came together yesterday in this room and gave honor to God by remembering Corrine. Corrine played the winning hand. 
whatever she was given, her chemistry, her connections, her circumstances, and not all were good, her consciousness, her choices, she played her hand and she won big time. Big time. So your choices can be transformed. You'll be given account. And then where we are focused as we do a little wrap-up today is no matter what your hand is, the Bible gives us clear instructions on how we can win with the hand we've been dealt. How we can win with the hand we've been dealt. So card number five is the wild card. In Genesis it says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness and let them rule over all the earth. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. <laughs> God blessed them and said, be responsible for what I have given you. Amen. I have been created in the image of God. Amen. That would be a good thing for you to say. I have been created in the image of God. Now, there's a lot of things that that means, but let me tell you the core thing that means. That means that I can choose how I live this life. I can choose how I go forward. I can choose what I'm going to do with what God has given me. I can choose how to respond even when there have been bad things happen to me. That is the core of being in the image of God. You have the freedom to choose. Now, here's the big deal. Now, I'm just saying it strong because I need to hear it too. How many here ever get in circumstances you go, it's just the way it's going to be. I cannot, I'm not going to change. Things aren't going to change. It can't change. I'm not going to, no, people can't change. Nothing's going to change. It's going to be this way till Jesus comes. God says, no. With me in the picture, if you choose, then we can play a winning hand. Now, the freedom to choose is both a blessing. How many are glad you have the freedom to choose? You get, most of you had the freedom to choose to come in and sit in the room, and some of you got drug in. <laughs> You're sitting there. Someday you'll get that freedom. Freedom is a blessing, but freedom to choose is also a curse. Because we make bad decisions. And if we drift through life, if we're distracted in life, if we think we're predetermined, then we will never decide to make a difference and have our lives changed by God. Look at these verses Moses wrote. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. <laughs> now circle this. Now choose life. Who does the choosing? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Could you choose differently today than you, you are? Yeah. Can you choose differently? Choose life. To choose life is to love the Lord your God, obey Him, and stay close to Him. This is the key to your life. Now, you can't choose the cards that you were dealt, but you can choose what you will do with what you've got. Yes, amen. And you can change with God's help. So here's the question of the day. This is big. Write it down. How many believe that you do have the ability to choose? How many don't think you have the ability to choose? Here's what I want you to write down. If you believe you have the ability to choose life in Christ for God and in your life you can change, write down, will you? Will you? Because if you believe you can change, the question of the day is, will you? If you believe you can make different choices than you're making right now, will you? And so I'm giving you homework for today. Will you? So every one of these five cards, as we deal with them, my question to you is, will you? So turn to the person next to you and say, will you choose to change? Go ahead. Don't answer that question. Okay, here we go. The number one choice we can make with the card we're dealt is I can choose to live healthier. I can choose to live healthier. I can choose to live healthier. Yesterday, I went to put on my black suit, the only black suit I have, and uh, I couldn't, I, I, 
It didn't work. I mean, I was, I said, this will kill me if I do this. So then I came with gray slacks and a black blazer because my black suit, the top fit, but the bottom didn't fit. How many believe you can choose to live healthier? Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So honor God with your body. You can choose to live with less stress. True? You can choose to eat better. Is that true? You can choose to exercise. Is that true? My friend Wayne Benson, just here's a simple one. My fr friend w Wayne Benson, he's, he said, uh, here's one I can do. Because my lower back starts hurting. So he, he said, you can do this. It's called good mornings. And uh, is, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> Some of you could choose to be healthier by going to the doctor. Some of you know you need to go get a checkup and you are ignoring it for fear of what he might tell you or she might tell you. I, I have female doctors. Some of you need to go get a checkup. By the way, if, does, um, how many have a body? <laughs> so here's what I want to know. Whose body is it? Whose body is it? Who does it belong to? And if it belongs to God, I think God loves your body. Well, he made you, and he bought you, and he purchased even your body belongs to him. It's not your body. And I suggest that uh, I've done some things sometimes to diet, so I, I'm joining with you. And I got to get back into that black suit eventually or I have to buy something new. <laughs> but God loves my body and he gave me this body to live this life in. And I can choose to live healthier and it makes a difference all the way around in the quality of life I have in Christ. In Christ. We've lived way too long separating the physical from the spiritual. Run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. He's a pretty big spiritual giant. How many think it would be good to follow the example of Paul? Run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. And circle this, I discipline my body like an athlete. Was he talking about he, he was going to be involved in sports? Or was he talking about his eternal run? He was talking about his living for God in this life. He said, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. I can choose to live healthier. How many here need to live healthier? Get those hands in the air. I see that hand. Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Now, here's what I want to suggest to you. Take a baby step. And my question to you is, will you? Will you? Well, I just can't change. I've been doing it this way for so long. Will you choose? Whose body is it? Now, I suggest... Many of us have tried diets. How many have tried diets? You're on a diet, and you go off the diet, and back on the diet, and diet, and diet. I suggest the problem with diets is our focus is in the wrong place. Because when we begin to see it through the lens that my body belongs to God, that changes everything. Now, will you? So what I want you to do is there under point one, what are you going to do? Are you going to do some good mornings? Are you going to eat oatmeal in the morning? Because it's good for you. Are you going to eat more broccoli? 
Are you going to do more hugs? Are you going to lower your stress? Does this make sense? Now, listen. Uh, uh, this is a whole message in itself. But our bodies are so prone on the moment to do what they want to do because we haven't disciplined them. And it is what throws us off when we try to follow Christ and all of a sudden our bodies have taken us a direction we didn't want to go because we're living at the surface. And so like Paul, we need to discipline. Now, don't go heavy on this. Don't go, oh, I'm going to go like Donnie Moore and I'm going to bench press 500 pounds this week. <laughs> we will be having your funeral next week. <laughs> what little thing will you do to choose to live healthier? I'm going to eat my peas. <laughs> we got Midwest. I don't have any peas here in California. I'm, I'm going to eat my corn. I'm going to eat whatever. Did you write it down? How many can choose to live healthier? How many need to live healthier? Will you? How many are doing something? Say, I will do this. I will. This is the altar call, friends. <laughs> this is the invitation right here. We can all do something to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit God has given us. And this body may wear out sooner than I want it to, but I can take better care of it than I am right now. And so will you? Uh, will you? Some of you need to just cut out some of the power drinks. I mean, you live like this all the time. <laughs> Rock star. <laughs> Five-hour energy. <laughs> Some of you need to cut out the coffee. You're drinking too much coffee. <laughs> Am I right? Is this true? I can choose to live healthier. Will you? And write it down. Number two, I can choose to deepen my relationships. I can choose to deepen my relationships. We crave connection, but we fear relationships. We crave intimacy, but we fear being vulnerable. We crave acceptance, but we fear rejection. So the simple thing is, we can build, we can strengthen our relationships. Now, I'm going to try and give you a few little keys, but in April, we'll have a whole series on relationships, Lord willing, but without relationships in your life, your life loses meaning. When your relationships have gone south, when you don't have connections, then your life is drifting and you don't have purpose. It's only with relationships with God and with others that we have purpose to our life, right? Some of you are single. You know the toughness it is to be single adults and be struggling with the connections you might or might not have. You cannot go it alone. Hear me. You need other people in your life. You need Jesus in your life, and you need to keep growing those relationships. So I can choose to deepen my relationships. It is the most important, it is the most important thing in my life. Now, sometimes I want to run from relationships. Sometimes I do. But... I can choose to deepen my relationships with other people. Write this down. The fear of rejection prevents connection. The fear of rejection prevents connection. And I said it last week, feelings are not facts. Some of you, for instance, feel as though you will never have a meaning relationship with somebody else. Some of you feel as though you will never get married. It's just a feeling. Some of you feel as though you're not pretty enough to be married. That's just a feeling. Now, I've done a few weddings in my time, and I've married together some pretty ugly people. I don't see anybody in this room that's worse looking than them. You hear me? I can't believe I said that. <laughs> now, 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. When I live in awareness of God's love and I live with an awareness that I want to love people, it takes the focus off of me. Now, can I just tell you that there are sunny mornings that I don't want to come? But Deanna says, I have to. She said, because you're the pastor. I'd like to leave that one off. But I move forward in spite of my fears because I love God at, 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 as much as I understand, and I love you. I love people. And though I have a fear many times of standing up here, the love I have, not feelings all the time, but the love I have moves me forward and moves the focus off of me. And so, some of you, how many, some of you don't do well at parties. And uh, you don't, because you fear rejection. I'm not talking just parties. I'm, I'm talking gatherings of people. I'm not going to be with people. You love sitting here in the mornings, like Sunday mornings, because you're anonymous. Nobody's going to get you, except t today they might have hugged you. <laughs> but you can be anonymous. But we need relationships with each other. And when I love people, it takes the focus off me. I'm not as fearful. When you go into a gathering of people and you fear rejection uh, because you fear what other people are thinking of you. Now, I have found that in all my years, I've never outgrown that. I go into a room and I can easily focus on what do they think about me. Could I just tell you how many have a fear sometimes of being in a, in a group of people and fearing what they think of you? Can I just tell you something? I discovered a long time ago, though I'm fearing what they think of me, the big deal is they don't think of me at all. They're not thinking of me. Who are they thinking about? Themselves. So if you can get the focus off you and focus on them, you can go a long way. Love is taking the focus off yourself. Paul said, let love be your highest goal. In Ephesians 3.17, I pray that Christ will live in your hearts by faith and that your life will be strong in love and be built on love. So, how many here need to have deeper connections? You need stronger relationships with those that are closest to you. By the way, some people that are close to you they got you blocked. It's, it's an issue with them. They're not going to let you in. As you have time, as you have occasion, show your love, but don't sweat it. If they are rejecting your love, redirect. Not, not in resentment, but some people close to you, it's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Keep deepening your relationships with other people. Let love be your highest goal uh, let me just tell you, how many here believe Green Valley is a perfect church? And uh, if, don't join us if you think, because you'll, you'll mess us up. <laughs> now here's my point. Being church together, coming together around the person of Jesus, is the laboratory of the Holy Spirit where we learn how to love. Amen. So get off it when you say, oh, they're a Christian and they don't know how to love very well. They're learning. They're a Christian and they didn't love me like they should. They're learning. It's a laboratory for learning how to love one another. And that's the good news because we got to go out there and love the people that may not care about us or they may not like us. But we come together and we do our best to learn how to love each other better. Church is the laboratory. So that's why I encourage you as much as we can, you need to get connected together in small groups of people. Maybe it's having somebody over for dinner that you sit near every week. Whatever you can do to co connect, because you can't get the relationships here, but deepening your relationships. Can I just give you one example of how you can deepen your relationships? Write down, be with. Be with. Again, the focus is not on you, it's on them. 
Jesus says he chose 12 disciples that they might be with him. Just be with. I'm reminded of a story from some years ago, and I've told this before, but a father took his son on a trip for the summer, and they visited every baseball park, Major League Baseball park in the country and went to a baseball game at every stadium. And somebody came to the father and said, wow, you must really love baseball. And he said, no, I don't like baseball, but I do love my son. Just being with. So how many need to deepen your relationships with God and with other people? Will you? Will you? And write down something you'll do. How about writing them a letter or a note this week? You you need to learn skills. You need to strengthen your uh, love muscles in Christ and keep pushing through. All right, come on, Dennis, let's go. Will you? Number three, I can choose to trust God regardless of the circumstances. I can choose to trust God regardless of the circumstances. This is in the message, but it is our key verses for the year. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. God's the one who will keep you on track. When it comes to your circumstances and mine, don't try to figure out everything on your own. I I go that route. Just give me time. I can think it through. And there's some things I just can't think through. It's not going to happen. And I just have to trust God the best I know how. Trust God. And many of you in this room will say, yeah, but you don't know my circumstances. No, I don't. No, I don't. I will tell you this, your circumstances, they're unique to you. And I will tell you this, there are so many people around you, and though your circumstances are unique, they have gone through amazing circumstances too. And you're not alone. You're not alone. God knows us far better than we know ourselves. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Have you lost a job? Have you lost a marriage? Have you lost a child? They're a prodigal? God can take everything that's happened in our lives and weave it together. It's not all good. But if we trust him, he can bring it together in ways we never imagined before. And we need to tell each other that on a Sunday morning. Write this down. I'm a picture of my past, but I'm not a prisoner of it. I'm a picture of my past, but I'm not a prisoner of it. A perfect Heavenly Father works through imperfect people and bad circumstances to do his perfect work in me. I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will boast of all his kindness to me. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Let us praise the Lord together and exalt his name. Now, many of you came into this room and discouraged this morning, and how many were encouraged as you just sang together with a couple hundred people, and you prayed together, and you heard people pray, and how many felt that that encouraged you. That's what we need. And it says, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. No matter what? Happens. So, will you? Will you trust God no matter what happens? Number four, I can choose what I will think about. Oh, this is a good one. I can choose what I think about. The fourth card I'm dealt is my consciousness, the things I keep saying back to myself. This week I caught myself talking to myself. How many talk to themselves? You all do all the time. (laughs) And I caught myself talking to myself, and I remember what I told you last week. I said, if we talk to our friends the way we talk to ourselves, we'd have no friends. And I I was repeating some tapes in my head. I go, that is crazy. 
That's nuts. What am I doing? I can choose what I think about. Now, we've been told for many years that our brain develops and is matured, and then you can't change it. Your brain can't change. What happens is, as I think thoughts, if I were to use a picture of it, we get ruts in our brain. They're the usual patterns. And then as we keep thinking the same thing, the ruts get deeper. And we think we can't change those ruts that are in our brain. In 2002, there was a um, Nobel Prize winner in neurobiology. And his emphasis was how we, even as adults, can change the way we think. We can reprogram the patterns that are going through our head. Well, it's good that science is catching up with the Bible because Romans 12 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Circle that. Changing the way you think. Focus on, what do I think about? Focus on, two weeks ago I said, this is our identity in Christ. I am completely accepted. I am extremely valuable. I'm eternally loved. I am totally forgiven. I'm fully capable. Am I a victim of identity theft? No. I have an identity in God. Okay, so you want some application on this one? I can choose what I think about. Will you? Some of you need to cancel your dish. Some of you need to not watch as much news. Let, let me tell you, whether it's the right wing or the left wing or the whole bird, <laughs> you're worrying yourself too much about things that you can't change. You're, you're living out there and not living here. And those things cause you great worry. And you can't even touch them. You can't do a thing about them. Are you, you know, I can't worry. Is the Social Security going to be there when I get there? I don't know. I should worry about that. No. So some of you need to cut out, limit your news. Some of you need to listen to more music. Some of you need to reflect on God's word. Some of you need to take those identities from, five, from two weeks ago, those five things, and just keep putting those together with the verses. Some of you can just write down a verse and carry it with you. Put it on the mirror in the morning so that you're thinking in the right direction. Now, some of you need to change your diet. You need to change the input to your mind and your brain so that you can think better thoughts. Some of you need to quit watching I don't know who you are, so don't take offense. Quit watching the soap operas. It is not reality TV. And as far as that goes, cut down on the reality TV. It is not reality. <laughs> Bubba something or whatever that is, I don't know. So, some of you need to, how many need to change what you're looking at and thinking about, focused on? Will you? So what I want you to do is write it down. Will you? And what will you do? I'm going to Concentrate more on God's word. I'm going to cut down on the news. I'm going to cut out watching so many movies that are filling my head with the wrong ideas. Right? I was checking the time. There was a glare on it. I couldn't see it. It's probably not the glare there. It's probably the eyes. Will you? What will you do? Now, some of you are living your lives in secret, and you know you're thinking in places you shouldn't go. Will you choose to go a different way? And last, this is the end. Aren't you grateful? Number five, fifth card, I can choose Jesus as my Savior. I can choose Jesus as my Savior. So write that down. Now, everybody, um, let me tell you, isn't it wonderful that Jesus saves us from hell and says we get to go to heaven? How many are grateful that Jesus saves us from our sins and gives us new hope and new life? 
But how many understand that Jesus can save us on a daily basis? That he is our savior on a daily basis. As we walk with him, as we talk with him, as we focus on him, when we will choose to set our attention upon him. And we've got to do that. If you're just living off of this hour and a half or hour and 45 minutes a week, and that's the only focus you have on the kingdom, then you are not going to make it. You're not going to be healthy. You're not going to be uh, playing well the hand you've been dealt because you've got to bring Jesus into the equation. God the Father is wonderful and glorious. I pray that his spirit will make you strong followers and that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, will be able to take in the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. I want you to know Christ's love. Then your lives will be filled with the fullness of God, with God's power working in us. God can do much, much more than anything we can ask or imagine. I need Jesus to save me, not just from my sins, I need him to save me from myself. Amen. Our thinking is, I'm waiting for God to show up and change my life. I'm waiting for God. And God says, I'm waiting on you. He says, I've done everything I can. I'm reaching out to you. I want to have a daily relationship. God says, I'm waiting on you. For you to seek me and to choose me and to follow me. So my question is, will you? On a daily basis, will you follow Jesus? Because if you follow Jesus, then you can be everything God meant you to be. No matter what the cards you've been dealt, no matter what's happened to you, the issue is choose life now. Choose life now. Change the way you think, for the kingdom of the heavens is now. God's kingdom is available to us now. Years ago, in southern Iowa, there was no electricity. In fact, the only electricity was uh, lots of lightning, too much. I remember Deanna coming back to Texas and visiting me 30 years ago, and she'd never been in a lightning storm like they have in Texas. And uh, the sky was lighting up, boom, boom, the house was rocking, and she was panicked. But uh, we'd have lots of lightning, but nothing else, no electricity. And along came a, uh, what was called the REA, the Rural Electrification Administration, and they ran power lines to the homes and the farms in southern Iowa. Change the way you think. For the kingdom of electricity has come among you. So there were many people that tied in and said, we'll do it, we're going to get the electricity to our house. There were some who said, no, I don't want to change the way I am. And some who thought it was too expensive. They wouldn't be able to afford it, so they didn't join in. But those who joined in and got electricity in their house, it changed everything. It changed everything. The way they preserve food, the way they prepare food, having light and not having to worry about darkness and doing everything changed. When we put Jesus as the Savior of our lives, it changes everything. The electricity is among us. Tie in. Would you stand with me? So my question is, will you? Will you choose Jesus as your Savior on a daily basis? Will you? So here's what I want you to do. It says in Philippians 4.13, God gives me the strength to face anything. I just have to tie into the electricity. Tie into the relationship with God. If I were to summarize the word worship in one word, that word would be surrender. How many here say, I want to be able to be all that God meant me to be. I want to play my hand in life to win. 
The key is that we choose to surrender our lives to Jesus, the King, the Lord, and the Savior. And what I'd like to do is invite all of you that say, I will. I choose life. I will choose Jesus to be my Savior on a daily basis. I will choose to live healthier. Now, most of you in this room, you're going to walk out and say, wasn't that fun, or maybe it was a good message, or I'm glad I laughed, and you're not going to do a thing. That's all right. It's your hand. You can deal with it any way you want. But I suggest that the hand we've been dealt, no matter what it is, man, I look around this room, (laughs) you are a diverse group. (laughs) You are, wow, wow. You've all had different experiences, but we all have the common denominator. We can, we can win with the hand we're dealt because of Jesus and because of our support for one another. So, if you choose to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about just, hopefully you've already done that, accepted Jesus for the forgiveness of my sins, accepted Jesus so I don't have to go to hell, which is a good thing. That's a good thing, but it's not the only thing. But you choose Jesus. You choose Jesus to be your Savior every day. How many need saving every day? So I want to invite you to just step out and walk to the front as far as you're able and say, I choose Jesus as my Savior. Would you do that right now? Come on in. And I know some of you, uh, it's uh, uh, choosing to uh, deepen your connections. Some of you are going, I'm scared to go down there with those people. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. Come on in. I I really didn't expect so many to come down. (laughs) That's wonderful. Has, uh, has God been talking to you today? Has he been talking to you? Are you talking to me? Is he talking to you? Will you play a winning hand? No matter what your hand is, if you choose Jesus, the best we know how, man, am I a stumbler. I feel like I stumble forward a couple steps and fall back. It's okay. Daily. So would you join hands with somebody standing next to you? Because we want to get the oxytocin going. And I want you to pray. Follow along as I pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for making me wonderfully complex. Almighty God, I recognize the hand that I've been dealt. And in Christ, it's a winning hand. I choose this day to live healthier. I choose this day to deepen my relationships with other people and with you. I choose this day to trust you. The circumstances aren't all good. But I trust you. Help me to trust you more. And I choose to think good things. Help me to set my attention and my affection on thoughts that are good. And my mind will be changed and transformed day by day. And we choose together to make Jesus our Savior and Lord. The kingdom is among us. The kingdom of power and love and grace. 
You have not given us a spirit of fear. But of power and love and a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus, for the hand I've been dealt. I choose you to help me play it to a win. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today in our live streaming of our service and our message. We're grateful that you joined with us. And if we can serve in any way, we'd be glad to do that. Just check out our website. That'll get you connected in any way that you might like to. And uh, that is greenvalleychurch.net. And we wish you the best and know that you really do matter to God. Have a great day.